Pygame in under 60 seconds. Making a physics simulation in Pygame in under 60 seconds. This video was highly inspired by... This video is grossly simplified, and if you're interested, I'll be making a more detailed video in the next month or so. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're probably wondering why this video took so long, and um, it's mostly because I got distracted. But hey, better late than never, right? R right? So this video will be me explaining how I made this, but that's really boring, so I would also decided to use this engine to make the Suica game. And you may be like, Hey, this looks familiar. <gasps> oh my god, he copied Obi-Wan Kenobi. I can't believe this guy has the guts to steal from others' videos ideas and exploit their hard work for his own use, and that's how... <laughs> so to clear things up, I didn't mean to copy this guy, but since I had a physics simulator laying around, I thought it'd be quite fun to make it, because the trend is dying and I need content. Also, PyMonk, which is his physics library, is not supported by PyInstaller. So that means only I can make it into an exe file, which doesn't suggest that I'm better, but... Okay, in all seriousness, we've both made this for different reasons, and you should totally go check them out. But only after my video, because I need the watch time. But that's enough yapping for the intro, so let me actually explain how I made this. So you probably think that I'm going to jump straight into the collision physics, but before that, we actually need to set up a foundation. So firstly, we make the ball class, because... <sighs> Ugh, I'm addicted to object-oriented programming. And next, we throw all our balls into a 1D array and blit them to the screen. Woo, we have balls. And now we have colorful balls. But we're kind of missing the physics of the simulation and thus need to add our first physics concept, which would be position, velocity, and delta. If you've ever gone to school, you probably know what position and velocity are, but what is delta? Well, delta is a variable that represents the time between frames. A smaller delta would mean that the balls move slower and smoother as they don't move as far. In order to make them move at the same speed, we would do multiple updates per frame, letting the simulation become much more accurate and not fall into chaos. But this is Python, and Python's slow. So instead, I implemented the delta in order to control the speed of the balls, which let us see the simulation in slow-mo. Moving on to the position and velocity, we can actually do a surprising amount of cool stuff. For example, if we add a downwards vector to our velocity, we get gravity. And if we want our balls not to fall into the endless abyss, we can make them flip their velocity on contact with the walls of the container, which in this case is our screen. But this is kind of ridiculous. Infinitely bouncing balls? That's only in a fantasy. But it's also because our balls have perfect elasticity. If we want something more accurate, we can decrease the elasticity coefficient to get less bouncy balls. Now as the Gen Alpha would say, this skibbity gat of the Sigma Rizzler is bussin', but we are still missing the collision part of the simulation, so let's work on that. To do this, we first have to detect collisions, and for that we use something called a sign distance field. Now you're probably like, whoa, that's a big word, this is way too nerdy and I'm gonna click off now. But wait, I can give you two reasons not to do that. Number one is my watch time, and number two is because it's actually a pretty simple concept. The basic premise is that given a point, we want to know the minimum distance between our point and our object. And since our object is a circle, this is actually really simple. Next to Pythagoras, we can calculate the distance between our point and the center of the circle, and to get the distance to the edge, we just subtract the radius. But actually, this doesn't tell us anything, because we want circle and circle collision, not circle and point collision. And to do this, we just subtract the radius of the other circle. When the circles are overlapped, you'll see that the distance is negative, which doesn't really make sense, but that's another aspect of the distance field mechanics. Anyways, we don't need a gauge I, I mean a ball touching detector. I mean, you get the point. We need the balls to bounce off one another. Wait. So you might have noticed that from our distance field, we can also get the overlap distance, which would be when it turns negative. And this is useful because if you think about it, the balls would only push each other apart by the distance of this overlap. So what we do is, assuming that the ball's masses are the same, disregarding the size, we would just push both balls half the distance in opposite directions, and also impart some velocity based on the average of their elasticity. And with these few lines of code, it's already so simple to achieve a decent looking physics simulation. Now we actually have the physics simulation, but hey, do you feel that? My FPS is basically non-existent at only 100 balls. That's really pathetic, even for Python standards. And the reason it's like this is because I'm comparing every ball to every other ball, which means that with 100 balls, I'm doing 10,000 comparisons, which is like really bad. So instead, we can implement a method called chunking. If you've ever played Minecraft or watched any of my other videos, you probably have already come across this term and don't know what it means. 
or if you do know what it means, you're probably typing a comment about how smart you are. But for those who don't know, chunking is a method that helps you to only compare balls that are close together by grouping them up based on their position beforehand. Then, when you want to do collisions, we only compare the balls in the groups that are surrounding it. This is really good because that means we don't have to compare with irrelevant particles like Timmy who failed his math exam and is also on the other side of the screen. Actually, the funny thing is this algorithm is still O n squared, which actually says a lot about big O notation, but that's for another video. So with this, you can already see how we can store many more particles before my computer starts to complain about how I have a skill issue and can't code in a better language. But anyways, now that we have a complete simulation, we can actually do some wacky stuff, like visualize every ball's speed and pressure with a color. We can also make our mouse a black hole which attracts surrounding balls to it, kinda like your mom. And now we can finally cut to the montage. Anyways, now that we're where I left off at the short, let's start to make this week again. Hey, you're missing something. Oh no, it's you again. Yeah, idiot, it is. And you missed something. You know, I'm yourself, right? Who asked? Anyways, you see this? The balls are spinning. Your balls are spinning. You know I'm you, right? Oh, right. So how do I add that? I don't know, figure it out yourself. You know I'm you, right? Oh, shit. So it appears that I have to add another thing, which is rotation. Should be simple, right? Well, this whole project is based on another project by Pezzles Works, so most of my algorithms are direct copies, I mean highly inspired from him. But it appears he didn't want to make the Suica game 8 months before it got popular, because he didn't add rotation to his physics engine. This means that A, I can't copy from him, I mean use him as reference material, B, I have to do research, and C, ignore B because I'm yellowing it baby. So there are probably many good academic papers about how to actually implement this, but I don't think this is their YouTube channel so I'm just going to use my way. So firstly, it would be a good start to add an angle, which is kind of like our position, as well as an angular momentum, which is basically velocity. Then we can test whether it's working, and it is. So next, we move on to the actual collision part of this. If you look at a ball, and you hit it with another ball, what would you expect? You'd expect it to roll this way, right? And this cause the friction is pulling on the ball unequally, causing it to spin. But you also may notice how a lot of the spin is dependent greatly on where it collides. For example, this collision would cause a lot less spin than this collision. And if you look even deeper, you may notice that the amount of spin is relative to its velocity and collision angle. But working with angles is hard, so instead we use a collision plane that is normalized to represent basically which angle it got hit from. And to get this plane, it's actually just the perpendicular vector of the collision vector. So now that we have this plane, we can use one of the magics of linear algebra, the dot product to see how much our velocity overlaps with this plane. And this shows us how much spin our ball should have. For example, as the other ball's vectors point more towards the center, the line gradually gets shorter. And if you increase the vector or move the second ball further from the center, you can see that the line gets longer. And you can see that it even generously provided a negative sign indicating which direction the ball should rotate in. Now that we have this, we can actually do anything we want since I'm not dying for this to be super realistic. So what I did is I converted this into the number of radians, and then converted that into an angle. Then I added this angle to the angular momentum, and woo, we have this beauty. Next, I decided that I should add a similar collision mechanics with the floor, so it actually rolls across the floor, which is kind of janky, but hey, it shouldn't be too bad. And now we're finally done with the physics part. Okay, so moving on to the Suica game should be easy, right? Yeah, yeah, it actually is this time. The premise of this game is that it lets you put fruits, but let's just simplify this into different size balls, into a container, and then in a 2048 fashion allows the balls of the same size to combine and grow. And that's it! We check for collisions, then we check for the fruit type, and then we remove one and increase the size of the other fruit using a table, because linear scaling is boring. And here it is! But it still kinda looks like the simulation, just with some cool mechanic, so let's change the screen size, put in an actually pleasing background, and let the player only spawn one fruit at a time. And now, with all the programming stuff out of the way, it's time for the part that all indie developers hate the most. Art. Boo. Oh, come on, man. Boo. Wait, what? Only me? Oh, okay. Well, anyways, cue the montage. So I'm actually going to talk for a bit while this is playing because I don't want to be responsible for any health effects caused by forcing a person to watch my shitting drawing skills for 30 seconds. Anyways, since this is my game, I decided that I'm not going to add these fruits because what in the world is a deco pond? 
So instead, I decided to add more local fruits from where I live, like a durian and rambutan, which looks like garbage, but whatever. I know I didn't mention this, but I made the score particles and also made bigger balls interact differently. Like, yeah. And with that, I'll let you suffer until the montage is done. <laughs> And here it is! Although the simulation physics are kinda wonky, I still find it quite fun and addicting, which is strange because I usually don't enjoy these games. And since I'm a pro gamer, here's me reaching the final fruit. If you're interested in downloading the game or playing with the simulation, links to the GitHub will be below. One of the biggest problems currently is how slow the simulation is at only 400 balls, but I think I've already done all I can. So maybe in the future I'll choose to work with C++ or actually use a game engine to speed things up. Also, this video was made using a different video editor, so tell me in the comments if you like it or not. With all this being said, this video took a long time to make, so I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Thanks for watching to the end of the video and I wish you a great day ahead. Okay, bye.